Good afternoon, everybody. Well, this is strange, isn't it? I was next door half an hour ago, and now I'm in the Sewing Street studio, and I've got you all to myself for a whole hour. And uh, no, it's amazing. Hope you all tuned in and watched the show this morning with myself and Elle, and a massive thank you from all of us for all your support and tuning in this morning. It was an amazing show. And um, we're gonna still hear those bangs going off in our ears from the, from the poppers just after 12 o'clock there, it was amazing. So the reason that I'm here today is we're going to explore door number four from the advent calendar. So I know what's in there. I've been working on it for a couple of days now and it's, it's just to my right here and I'll show you in a second. But first of all, we're going to have a quick delve in the advent calendar. So hopefully you're all at home with me and none of you have had a sneaky peek. I've not had a sneaky peek either. Just to let you know that I'm also back on the 9th and I've made the jewellery for the ninth, so we will do all this again next Tuesday for the ninth, and it's something completely, completely different. But today we've got box number four, and this is so, so, so beautiful. So you get inside your organza bag. I can already see that there's an anti-tarnish tag, which can only mean one thing. You've got sterling silver. So let's do the sterling first. I'll just put that to one side. So in this little bag, just empty this out. We have the components. We have a head pin, sterling silver. That looks like an inch. Then we've got this cutest, cutest little flower bead cap. Then we've got this incredible sterling silver bale. Beautiful, beautiful design. And then we've also got a sterling silver spacer bead. So we've got those four components, all sterling silver. And then the star of the show, which is going to put all of this together. And this is the first time I've worked with this product and it's absolutely beautiful. My mother, I've mentioned this on the show before, my mother was a great collector in cameo brooches. And um, this just reminds me of the material that her cameo brooches used to be made from. This is the conch shell. Now no other conch shell, this is queen conch. Now the stipulation that makes the difference between conch was again, which is a mollusk, um, the most beautiful, you've probably all seen conch shells. They're the, the huge ones that you hold up to your ear and you can hear the sea. And I'm pretty sure my grandmother used to have one in her fireplace in her cottage. Always remember that, it's one of my childhood memories. Never thought I would be one day working with jewelry made from it. So we've got, we've got amazing conch bead, rice bead in here. It's about a centimetre long, about, about seven millimetres wide, and you can already see the shadows of pink moving across. It's, it's just absolutely beautiful. This is your queen conch. And as I was going to say, what the difference between a conch shell and a queen conch is to be known as a queen conch, it has to be over seven years old and also, as the mollusk is, is getting older and older, the shell grows alongside it. And apparently it has to have a certain amount of spikes before it is known as a conch shell. It's incredibly rare. You can imagine the mollusk trailing the deep oceans. There's lots of predation, lots of predators that fancy having them for supper. And um, so for a mollusk to get to over seven years old is quite rare and unheard of. So as I said, it's a range that we launched with the wonderful Dave Troth a few months ago and it's absolutely beautiful and this is the first time that I've actually worked with it in the flesh. So what I've decided to do is I'm making a seed bead necklace. Now I believe this is the first seed bead demo of the advent calendar, day four. So what I've decided I'm going to make, which I've made just here, is one of my favourite designs. And if you've not tried seed beading before, it's a technique that you can pick up so easily and very quickly, it grows very quickly. I, I think from start to finish, this probably took me about three, three and a half hours. So obviously you can do a little section, stop and come back to it a bit later if you want to. But it's beautiful, it's very soft, it's very fluid, absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see, the star of the show, we've got at the bottom of the bust here, we've got the conch in all its glory. So I think what I'm going to do today is we're going to put together the conch shell, first of all, the little pendant drop, and then I'm going to go through some basic seed bead techniques with you. So I'm going to show you, first of all, 
how to thread a needle, a really successful, easy way of threading a needle, which is one of, well, again, it's a, it's a basic technique in seed beading, but I've, I've spoken to many people who, who want to get into the seed bead world, they can't thread the needle, they've tried and tried and tried and they've given up, and it's such a shame. So hopefully, the way that I'm gonna show how to thread a needle, you won't have any issues with at all. And then I'm going to show you the actual beading technique, how to get this spiral, and then I'm going to show you when we get to the point, I'm going to show you how we, how we attach new cord mid-design, and then I'm going to show you how to attach the finding clasp at the end here. So obviously, I've only got an hour with you, so we won't be able to make the whole necklace, but at least I can give you the fundamental sections, and you'll be able to produce something like this all on your own. So what you can see, I've, I've chosen colours that I've sort of found within the conch shell. So I've gone for, for plums, and burgundies and the the sizes of the beads I've used hopefully there's some sort of an ombre design and pattern running through it it's absolutely beautiful so hopefully you've got seed beads in your stash and we'll run through the sizes in a moment that you can either stick to this color range or completely go off piste and come up with the most amazing colors but I think I think for my first delve into working with the Queen Conch. I think I've, I've gone for the colours that I originally thought of in my mind that I would use alongside. Okay, so before I talk about the seed beading, we'll work on, on this little pendant we've got. So as I've mentioned earlier, we have our bale, we have our conch shell, we have our head pin, and we also have our spacer bead. So it's entirely up to you if you use your bead cap above or below and the same with your spacer bead. On mine, I put it below, and I used my spacer bead above, and that was how my bale lies, and there you have your, your head pin. So what I decided to do was just incorporate some of the seed beads into my design, and I've gone for an 11-0, which I'll introduce to you in a second. So I've gone for some 11-0s, and I've gone for this amazing vibrant metallic pink. So pretend I'm not using these at the moment. I'll talk to you about the seed beads in a second. So I'm going to incorporate these within the pendant drop just to tie everything together with the necklace. So I'm going to take our head pin first of all, and this is a ball head pin. And underneath, I'm going to pick up a 15-0. I'm going to pick up an 11-0. And then I'm going to pick up my bead cap and it's got seven petals around the outside and you can see in the center we've got the hole that I'm going to take my head pin so you can see that sits nicely underneath then I'm going to pick up my conch and I'm just going to choose which side is the darker because I want to I want to continue with that ombre so I'm going to turn it this way and I'm going to go from right up through to left so that's now had that attached then I'm going to repeat this little bead section here so I'm going to pick up an 11-0 and then a 15-0. And at this point, just check that you've got enough length, and I pretty much have. I'm going to pick up my spacer bead. I'm going to slide that on the top, and then I'm going to pop on just one of my 11-0s. So if you decide that you want to have a longer pendant drop, there's nothing stopping you Head, going for a longer head pin that you have in your stash if you want to. Try to keep with the sterling silver. But I quite like this, this layout that I've got on here and that little, that little bead cap just adds a little something to the bottom there. It's absolutely beautiful. So next is we're going to, we're going to finish off our end to attach it to our bale. So I'm using round nose pliers for this. You can either use round nose pliers or your flat nose pliers. I tend to use round nose pliers for absolutely everything. It's probably not the best thing to do as a jewellery designer, but uh, I tend to use round nose for everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go right to the tip of my pliers and about a millimetre above the 11 -0. I'm going to bend away from me and I'm going to go to the very end of the head pin and I'm going to do in a few little movements. I'm just going to curl that back, but I'm not going to close it. Can you see? It's still open. I'm not going to close it because what I want to do is I want to pop on my bale. Now the bale is exactly the same on the front and the back and you can see along the top there, we've got the 925 sterling silver mark on the top there, pride of place. So I'm going to take the end, I'm going to place it through the ring and then I'm going to finish curling back that little tail 
so it fits in nice and neatly on the ends. So I'm just going to go in and fold it in nice and secure and I've left myself just enough sterling silver there. So if I lay that down now you can see that everything is now attached. So this is your little gift in the advent calendar. So I'm going to put this to one side and then we're going to move on to the, to the seed beading technique. So list of ingredients. What you're going to need, you're going to need a sharp pair of scissors. And as you can see, I put my name on all of my pair of scissors. <laughs> so they are very valuable to me. So we, these are your Fiskars scissors, which I use for all of my seed beading. Then the, the, the uh, thread I'm going to be using is a six pound break weight fire line from Beadsmith, and I'm going to be using white. So normally I would use a forest green, um, but for this I wanted, to, I wanted some of the, the thread to show through. I didn't want it to disappear, so I wanted to, wanted to see some of the white because I wanted to pick up the white from the queen conch shell. Then you need needles. Now I've gone for the a size 11, this is a tulip needle. So what I'd recommend is either using a size 11 or a size 12. Because we're using 15 OC beads, even though we're not going to be doing multiple passes through the 15, it's, it's, you need that fluidity for the technique that we're, going to, that we're going to show. So definitely recommend either a size 11 or a size 12. These are size 11. Then you're going to need a six millimeter shell pearl I've gone for a six millimeter in this beautiful minky white ivory color. You don't need to go for shell pearl, you can go for any other gemstone, but I, I like the shell pearl to again tie in with the conch and I think I've chosen the color pretty well. They seem to match quite well. So these are six millimeter round. Then seed beads, here we go, my favorite it. We are going to be using four different seed beads. We're going to be using a 15-0 first of all, and this is a silver lined amethyst. Then our 11 which we've just spoken about briefly, is a galvanized fuchsia. This is galvanized hot pink. Then we're going to be using an 8 and this is a silver lined pink crystal. So we've got 15, 11, 8. And also we're going to need another color 8, and this has to be the darkest of all four seed bead colors. If you want to, if you want the ombre, you need the dark, and then you need the 15 the next step up. And as you see, it gets lighter and lighter. So I'm going to pop them in that direction. So you can see now, we've got that perfect ombre of your four colors. Once you've got your seed beads, we've sorted out the thread, we've sorted out the needle, and you'll need finding. Now, because the queen conch is pink. If you want to, you can go for a rose gold finding, but because the bale was silver, I felt that I had to continue with the colour of the silver, so I've gone for sterling silver jump rings, and I've gone for a sterling silver lobster claw clasp. But now, me thinking too much, I thought under the sea, conch shell, lobster, it all tied in perfectly well. You can just a little insight to how my, how my mind works. It's really not necessary. You can, you can go for, a, for a, a bolt ring if you want to, or a toggle, entirely up to you. So that's what you're going to need, your 15s, 11s, and two color eights. But if you can, one of your 8s will be dark, darker than the other three colors, if you want that ombre design. Right, let's make a start. So as I promised, we're going to first of all, I'm going to show you a fail safe way of threading your needle. So these are tulip needles, which are my needle of choice. And the reason I love the tulip needles, many reasons, one, they're very, very strong, yet they give you the bounce. I'm not very, I'm not very good at working with a bendy needle. And you sometimes find that, um, that lesser quality needles, they bend out of shape and at that point, I have to discard it. I, I need a straighter needle. Now, with the tulip needles, they're very, very strong, but you still get that fluidity and you still get that movement. So that's one reason why. But the second reason, you can probably see quite clearly that these are yellow in color at the end. Now, tulip needles are famous worldwide for coating the eye of their needle in 24 karat gold. So the eye is slightly wider 
but it doesn't take it doesn't it, do, it doesn't take into account the, the 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 length of the needle so it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't get in the way it doesn't impede on your on your threading it's 24 karat gold as i said all of the needles come in these little these little acrylic vials and you can probably notice that little white piece of paper in there one if you do decide to to use tulip needles don't discard the white little tag because attention to detail that's actually an anti tarnish tag so that'll stop your gold coating on the eye of your needle from tarnishing so these are my go-to needle of choice and they come in so many different sizes and not only do they do sewing needles they also do knitting needles and crochet hooks and all sorts of needles for the hobbyist so this would be my go-to if you don't have any tulip i would recommend using a size 12 beadsmith needle but just be aware that they they, they may bend out of shape and some people might use like to use with it with the bend but personally i prefer the straight needles okay so we've got our needle next we're going to work on our length of thread now if we're doing a, a big design i'm not showing you the design yet fully I'll, I'll lay it on the mat in a second you will if you do a big design like this you'll probably need to replace your thread maybe two or three times so i'm going to show you that a bit later on in the demonstration as well again another fail safe way of adding your thread so i'm going to cut a manageable length now if i'm working at home on large seed bee projects i tend to uh, use a wingspan so fingertip to fingertip outstretched which is about six feet in length but because we want to add a bit in the demo today I'm not going to cut as much this is probably three or four feet so I'm going to cut my thread so this you'll find quite easy if you're threading your needle so at the moment our thread if you can imagine a very 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 thin cylinder okay a long tube of thread the eye of your needle is flat okay so there's an adage a square peg in a round hole which is exactly what this this at the moment it is so the first thing we need to do is we need to prep our thread so all I'm going to do is the last inch of thread I'm going to place between my index finger and my thumbnail and I'm going to pinch and I'm going to drag you only need to do it once or twice so pinch and drag so now you have flattened the end of your thread so you can use your flat nose pliers if you want to but I find using your, your nail is, is really simple the next thing we have to do is I've seen lots of people with their needle trying to push the thread into the eye from quite a distance the easiest way to do this is if you pull the thread so it sits in between your thumb and finger and you can just see the thread just in you can just see the thread and what I do is I offer the needle to the thread not the thread to the needle okay so I'm going to go in and I'm going to thread first time it's as easy as that so this this demonstration will be on YouTube after you've watched today so definitely look back and have a couple of goes at this but as, as you said it's pretty much fail safe so remember you need to flatten your thread to flatten it to go in the eye of the needle because once it, if it's a tube there's no way you'll get it through at all okay and this is this is the same with any thickness and gauge of your beading thread okay so we've got our needle threaded and we're ready to go so i'm going to lay my necklace down and we're just going to quickly talk through the design and then and then we'll work on it together so this is known as the simple spiral it's one of my favorite techniques Another of my favourite techniques is called the Cellini spiral. Now, you get the same sort of look, but with the Cellini spiral, it does take a long time. It's quite a slow, progressing piece of work. This, on the other hand, is very, very, very simple, very quick, and it builds very quickly as well. Now, you can see why I, I recommended the colours of the seed beads that I, I gave to you, because I wanted this ombre pattern. So, can you see we've got that dark colour running through the centre, this is known as the core and that'll be running through from one end of your necklace right through to the other and then the spiral is made up of beading sections which we call arcs and if I close if I just bring this across you can see that this is what we call an arc so it's a combination of seed beads from small so these are your 15s then we're going to your 11s then eights and then once we get to the center we do a mirror image so we get from small to large large to small 
So what I'd probably recommend doing is once we come up with the combination of beads that we're going to use, is just lay them out on the top of your mat just so you remember the combination. And after three or four threading of the arcs, you'll soon pick that up and you won't need the combination. What you could do, which is another, another idea, is before you start, lay out your combination, take a photograph of it, and then once the piece of work is completed, take a picture of that and just keep it in your, in your photos on your phone or in an album, however you keep your photographs. And then you can flick back then and just, just get an idea of past projects and the best combinations. And obviously I wanted quite a small dainty necklace because we had the daintiness of the conch shell. But you can make the arcs as big as you like. You can use 60 seed beads if you want a really chunky design. But I think for the conch, this is the perfect sizing of the beads. So first of all, we're going to talk about the core and then we're going to choose the combination that we're going to use for our arcs. So I'm just going to place that in front of me here. So we're going to put our specs on. So we're going to lay out our beads. So we've got our 15s that I mentioned earlier, which is a silver lined amethyst. If, you, um, if you've got a small stash of seed beads, it's well worth going onto our, onto our website and uh, having a look at what we've got in stock. Or as many of you are, I know, seed bead addicts you'll have something in, in your stash that you can use alongside your conch. So we're just going to empty out some of our 15 O's. Then we're going to pop on our 11s. And then we're going to pop on our arc pink, which is this light bubblegum color. So you can see there we've got that, we've got that combination for our ombre. It's just Pop that across there. I don't like a stray bead in the way. There we go. Okay, so they're the beads that you're going to use for your arc. And then we've got our really dark for our core. So we're just going to lay those out down the row. Okay, so as far as the core goes, as I mentioned earlier, this is only going to go through the center of your necklace. You won't be using that bead in the arcs at all. So what we need to do first of all is we need to decide on the size of our arc. So I'm going to show you the, the, um, the way that I decide on how many beads I'm going to do. So I don't want my arc to be too large. Okay, so I'm going to decide on my arc size first. So what I've gone for, the combination are two 15s, two 11s, one eight, and then reverse. So one 11, two eights. Okay, so two, two, one, two, two. That's the size of my arc. I don't want it to sit flat on my core, I want it to have that curve. You can do just one bead size, so for example you can do all 11s or all 8s, but then you'll get a more structured static. It won't, you'll still get the swirl, but it won't be as pronounced as doing a multiple combination of beads. So I'm going to go for 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, that's going to be my combination. So I'm going to be using four of my arc beads. Okay, so we're going to do four for the core and then I'll explain how the core builds. If I went straight on now and threaded these beads on, the beads would fall off the end. So what we need to do is we need to pop on a stopper bead. Now at home I, I've got a stash of, I've got a bead soup of different colors. So I would use a bead stopper, a different color than the beads that I have in front of me. But I'm just going to pick up an 11 and I'm going to slide it down and I'm going to leave a good 10 inches, probably 10 or 12 inches, because what we want to do is I find it sometimes it's a bit of a waste to have your beaded design either under the hair at the back of the neck or behind the neck, behind the head and you can't see. So what I tend to do is I do a bit of simple beading at the back leading up to the clasp. A, it cuts down the time that you need to make your necklace and B, I feel it's a bit of a waste if it's going to be hidden at the back of the hair uh, sorry, underneath the hair or at the back of the neck. So I always tend to do a bit of beading at the back. And it's a nice way of showing off your, your shell pearls as well. Okay, so I've left my tail. I'm exiting through the top of the 11 -0, And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go round the back of the bead and back up once. And I'm going to pull that. And as you can see, we've got our stopper. Nothing's going to fall off. But then when we come to finish our design at the end, it slides off. So you can see it slides backwards and forwards. So that's your stopper bead. You can get spring stoppers, but I think why, why spend out on the expenditure when you can just use 
an 11.0 seed bead. Okay, so that's our stopper. So we've decided on our combination of our arc. We're going to start on the design. So we're going to pick up one, two, three, four of our core bead. Okay, now this is the only time that we're going to be picking up four beads. From now on, every time we come to add a bead to the core, running through the center of the necklace, we're going to be picking up one. Okay, so this is the only time. And also, you never pick up core beads and, 11, and your arc beads at the same time. Okay, so just bear that in mind as well. So we've got four eights. We're gonna slide those down so it reaches our stopper bead. Okay, so we're going to do our first arc now. We know the combination. So we're going to pick up two 15s, two eights, sorry, two 11s, one eight, two 11s, two 15s. Okay, so that's two 15s, two 11s, one eight, two 11s, two 15s. And like we did with the stopper bead, I'm going to hold those four dark core beads in my finger. I'm going to go round the back of the four and back up through all of them, all of the cores. Okay, so I'm going to go round and back up through all of the four beads. I'm going to pull nice and tight and I'm going to slide everything down so it meets our stopper bead. Okay, so pull nice and tight. So we've got our core and we've got our first little arc. Now if you look closely you can see that because we're using a 15 it desperately wants to fall into the 80 at the end. So all we're going to do is we're just going to give it a little push and pull with our thread. Okay so that's nice and tight. We've got no 15s trying to get into the 8. Okay so that's our first arc. So from now on you're going to be doing this. You're going to pick up one 80 which is going to elongate your core going through the center. So I'm gonna slide that down. So now we have five core beads. We're going to pick up our arc combination. So that's two 15s, two 11s, one eight, two 11s, two 15s. And as we did before, we're only going to take our needle through four arc bits, of, sorry, through four core beads, okay? So you remember, we're always going to take our needle up through four, and the four we're going to go up through are the last four. So that's the one we've added just now. So every time you do a move, you're going to add one core bead. So we're going to count one, two, three, four. So we're going to forget the first one, which is the first of the group of four. So I'm going to hold that in my fingers and I'm going to take my needle back down and I'm going to count one, two, three, four, and I'm going to go up only through those four eight O's. I'm going to pull nice and tight. So now if I lay this down, you can see that was our first arc and this is our second. And what we want is we want them to lie next to each other and that's how the spiral happens all on its own. So we're going to pick up that little group of beads and I'm just simply going to take that last core we added, I'm going to pop it round the back so it sits next to its neighbour. And then I'm just going to make sure that the 15O isn't desperately trying to get into the 8. If you weren't using 15Os in your design, there'd be no need because the, obviously the, the 11 wouldn't be able to get inside that 8 -o. The 15O won't be able to get inside there, but it'll sit on the outside edge. So you just need to be aware of that. Okay, so that's our two. So we're going to repeat. I'm going to pick up an 8 -o. I'm going to slide that down. So now we've got six beads in our core. I'm going to pick up our combination. So that's one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two. Okay, so that's our combination. Again, we've just added bead number one. So we're going to count one, two, three, four. We're going to take our needle up through the four, pull nice and tight, and then we want to pop it round the back to meet its neighbors. We're going to pop it round the back, and then we're just going to, so what I do is I pull the thread up, and I just use my fingernail just to push the 15 O's away from the eight. Okay, so we've got our three. So I've only done three arcs, and you can already see the spiral starting to happen. Because that move we do, where we take it round the back and pop it with its neighbors, the spiral happens all on its own. 
so we'll do a few more. So I'm going to pick up an 8 -o. Now I'm getting quite blasé now, so I'm not going to slide this down yet. I'm just going to pop it past the eye of the needle. Then I'm going to pick up two 15s, two 11s, one 8, two 11s, two 15s. Now I'm going to slide all of the beads down. And then we're going to, again, so bead number one was the one we've just added. So one, two, three, four. We're going to go in, we're going to go up. We're going to pull our arc nice and tight. We're going to pop it around the back and we're just going to make sure none of the 50 nose are desperately trying to get in. Okay, so you can already see now we've got four already making that amazing little spiral. So we'll do a few more. So one eight, two fifteens, two elevens, one eight, two elevens, and two fifteens. We're going to count from the top. So we're going to slide those down. We're going to count from the top. So this is the one I've just added. So it's one, two, three, four. And this is why it's important that you have either a size 11 or a size 12 needle because these core beads here, this is the fourth time that the needle is passing through the, the lower bead. So you need a finer, a finer needle. So we're going to pull this up through, pull that nice and tight, flip it around the back. You get into this little routine where you, you pull, flip it around the back to its neighbors and you can see the spiral starting to happen. So we'll do a few more, and then I'll show you how we add our pendant. So we're going to do our little combination again. And we're going to pick up two 15s, and slide it down. And then we're going to start one, two, three, four. We're going to come up through all four. This is why, uh, for me, the tulip needs have been valuable because they're so smooth and an absolute joy to work. And uh, and I think you pay that little bit extra, but I think you're paying for that quality for the quality, without a doubt. So if you would, if we were turning this into a pair of earrings, which would be quite simple to do, what I like to do is so you, if you see here, we've done one, two, three, four, five, six arcs, but we've only got half a spiral. The back is is bare. So what I like to do is make sure you have one full spiral. So it, it, it's between 12 and 15 of our arcs make a complete spiral from like a corkscrew. Um, you can do two or three corkscrews if you want, if you want a, an elongated pair of earrings. But I think for earrings, 12 spirals, between 12 and 15 is a good number. So we've added our core. And then we're going to pick up our combination. So two 15s. Two 11s, one 8. Now I've gone dark to light, but there's nothing stopping you going from light to dark if you wanted to with your arcs to get a completely different look. So we're going to go in, count from the top. So one, two, three, four. Let's go in, there we go. Pull the arc around the back. Now these 15s are being very good today. So let's do our combination again. So two 15s, two 11s, one eight, two 11s, two 15s. Then we're going to go up through the four. A little bit preemptive then, there we go. So up through one, two, three, four. flip it around the back. So what you would do is you would continue with your spiral. So on mine, I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've done nine spirals. And now I'm going to add my pendant. So all we're going to do is we're going to incorporate a couple of our shell pearl that I mentioned 
So I've gone for shell pearl, you can go for any, any six millimeter round. But I think this shell pearl is the perfect color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one of my shell pearls, slide that down, and I'm going to pick up two of my 11 O's because I need, I need something for the, for the bale to sit on. So I'm going, now I'm going to slide the bale down and you can see that two is just the right number. Then I'm going to pick up another shell pearl. And the reason I've incorporated shell pearl around the bale is because I'm incorporating the shell pearl at the back of the necklace as well. I just wanted something to pick up from the front to the back, just so you get that, that uniformity and fluidity. So I've done my little section of spiral. So in effect, because we're the other side of the pearl, we don't have a core. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the beginning again. So we're going to pick up our original four. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to slide those down. Okay, so now, so imagine we're doing two, two necklaces, but we're sort of joining halfway in the center. So what you'll find easiest is if you just pull those four away. Now we're going to pick up our arc. So we're going to pick up two 15, so exactly the same combination. Two 11s, one eight. Two 11s, two 15s. And you'll find this easier. If you then, remember right at the beginning we were talking about a stopper bead. So we're going to go round the back of the four, up through, pull nice and tight. And then once you get to this stage, all you're going to do is you're just going to pull the core down so it sits nice and tight up against your pearls. Hold that in your hand and we're going to start the whole process again. So we're going to pick up one core bead, so it's only four right at the very beginning. From now on it's only going to be one. So I'm going to slide one down. Then I'm going to pick up two 15s, two 11s, one eight, two 11s, two 15s. We're going to count four from the top, so we only count the last four. So one, two, three, four. We're going to go up through, and again, we're going to pull nice and tight because however tight you pull the first arc, it may come away from your shell pearl and that needs to be nice and tight. So we're just going to go in, pull nice and tight. We're going to flip the second around the back so it meets its neighbor. And just give the all 50 now a little flick just to keep it away from your eight. And we're going to continue. So we're going to pick up an eight. So it's exactly the same as we did before we came to our little pendant. So I've dropped on an arc. I'm going to pop on some more 11 O's. And again, you might have noticed I'm working on a felt mat, which is my go-to when I'm working with C beading because it stops the beads from rolling around. So I've got my 8 O. Okay, I'm going to repeat our arc. So we've got one, two 15s, two 11s, one eight. 211s, two 15s. We're going to pick up our beading. We're going to count from the top. One, two, three, four. From the bottom through to the top. Pull nice and tight. Flip around the back. So you can see there that this 15 0 desperately wants to get into the 8. So we're just going to give it a nudge and then pull nice and tight. So what I'm going to show you now is this little section here. So can you see, I missed this 15, look, it popped in when I wasn't looking. And now because I've gone further along, it'll be quite tricky to get that 15. I can manipulate it, sort of, but then it's going to be loose. So it's really important that you just keep an eye on those little 15 O's. It's only with 15s, as I mentioned earlier, if you use 11 O's large, 11 O's upwards, so they get larger from an 11, you won't need to do this, but it's just those, those little blighters, they want to get into that ATO. So that one I missed. Okay, so just, just take your time. It'll make all the difference. So we'll go back to our second spiral. I'll do a couple more and then I'm going to show you how we add thread. So we've got our eight. I'm going to slide that down. Then we're going to pick up our combination. So two 15s, 
211. So this is exactly the same, it doesn't alter throughout your design. Okay, so we're counting from the top again. So one, two, three, four. You can slide that back from the four back up to the top. I have to say, if I had a top three of seed B techniques, I would have to say that working with super duos would be my number three. Simple spiral, which I'm going to call this, would be my number two. And obviously, you, you all know by now that I'm going to choose tubular netting or kiss cross as my number one, but the simple spiral is definitely a close second. It's very simple. Once you get the technique, it's incredibly addictive. And as I said, it builds up very, very quickly, a lot quicker than a Cellini spiral would. So I've got my 8 -0. I'm going to slide down. We're going to add our core. That's where our arc, which is two 15s. You know the combination now. Count from the top. One, two, three, four. Going to go in. And we're going to go up through. Now I'm using Mayuki seed beads purely because I have tried to use Delicas in the past as my arc. But as you can see, the Mayuki is slightly curved on the edges. They're not round, they're, they're, they're like a wheel, but they have curved edges, which leaves the minutest of space in between the beads, which is enabling me to go up through with my needle. Now, Delicas, they are flat edges, they have straight edges. And it's quite difficult, once they're sat on top of each other, to get leeway in to use your needle to get in, to go back up through your core. So, to have a go. I, I tried, I persevered, but I gave up in the end. It was, it was too much like hard work using Delicas. But give it a go. You, you may have been more, um, be better than I as at it, more success. So I always use Mayuki rather than Delicas. So let's do a couple more. So I've got my 8 -0. Oh, see, that one's trying to jump in. So I'm just going to move him out of the way and then drop the 8 -0 in, give him a little push so he's now out of the way. And I'm going to pick up my arc. So one, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, and two. So I'm going to go count from the four and I'm going to go up through. Perfect. Pull nice and tight, flip him around the back, and just give him a little oik. There we go. They really try their luck, the little 15s. Okay, so you can already see the spiral starting to happen. And what, what fascinates me about this technique is it, it does it all itself. From that simple little move, by popping it around the back to its neighbors, the spiral happens all on its own. It's, it's amazing. So what I'm gonna show you next is, a, 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 again, which you will need with this technique, and you may need to do this, as I mentioned in the introduction three or four times, is we're going, is we're going to add thread. So as I said, when I'm doing any CB project, I always do this, which is, which is funnily enough, fingertip to fingertip is your height. So my fingertip to fingertip is six foot two. So it's always something to remember. So if, if a guest designer is on the show and um, let's think who, who is, um, a bit shorter than me. Laura Binding, for example. Laura Binding's fingertip to fingertip would be a bit shorter than my fingertip. So, so just bear that in mind. But I tend to do six foot length, which is which is a nice this which is a nice length to have. It was absolutely wonderful to see Laura on the show the other day and I, I texted into the studio just to mention. So it was lovely to see her. So I'm coming to the end of my thread and I've obviously I've obviously cut this a bit shorter. Okay, so we, we're running out of thread we need to add a bit more. So we go back to our spool, we take off our next length. We cut that off. And again, this will be something that would be really good for you to go back to on YouTube this evening, just to have a, have a little recap. Okay, so we've got our existing thread on our mat. We take our new piece of thread. We only need probably a couple of inches in, in the palm of your hand. We're going to go round our index finger round our index finger so we've got a loop. Then we're going to take the longer and we're going to fold it in half and bring it up through the loop that's there. So in, in effect, we're making a sliding knot. Okay, so we've got our sliding knot so we can make it smaller and we can make it larger. Okay, so that's our sliding knot. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pick up 
the remnants of our working thread. We're going to place that through the loop and we're going to pull our sliding knot nice and tight. Okay, now we've got our long thread, which is our new piece of thread coming out the right hand side. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take our two shorter lengths and we're going to pull them down so it meets our work. So can you see I'm pulling nice and tight. So I've got the new piece of thread in my hand and the two shorter threads are waiting to be worked. Now I don't do anything with those at the moment. I, I'll come back to those. They might be in the way ever so slightly, but I don't tie a knot until I do another couple of moves. So and now I'm going to go back and thread my needle. So exactly the same route. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to just drag the thread through my nail and finger. And then I'm going to take my thread so it just see the point and I'm just going to go up through the needle again first time okay so have a practice with this it's, it's definitely my way to go for threading a needle so I'm just going to do a couple of arcs and then I'll show you how I get rid of those threads so I've popped on my core so two two one two two Again, I'm going to count from the top. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to take my needle up through the four. Make my arc. Pop it around the back to meet its friends. You'll be saying this in your sleep. Pop it around the back, say hello to its friends. So I'm popping down my core. Then I'm popping beads for the arc. So two fifteens, two elevens. 1 8, 2 11s, 2 15s, and I'm going to go from the top. So 1, 2, 3, 4. My needle up through the center, through the core, pull nice and tight, flip it around the back. Just make sure that little 15 0 isn't in the way. Okay, so I would recommend maybe doing an inch, a couple of inches of your spiral. And then you would go back to your threads, so your two loose threads. And all I do is I tie a single knot, which brings the two together. Pull that nice and tight. And because I'm using eight O's, the knot disappears inside the core. So I'm pulling that nice and tight. I'm going to go in and tie one more single knot. Pull that nice and tight. And then all I do is I then go in and just cut my threads. And because it's a spiral, the spiral will help your little ends if you do have any ends disappear. So once that spiral, it'll engulf that knot, you see. So you're going to continue until you have two sides of your necklace exactly the same length. And now we're going to pop on our clasp. So as I mentioned earlier, I don't, I'm not a fan of having a beading technique behind the neck or under the hair because it's not going to be seen. It will save you. If I had to bead this section here, that would probably take me another hour, okay? And I've got quite a busy schedule with Jewelry Maker most days. So any, any easiness, it helps me out a great deal. If you'd rather continue with the spiral, you can actually join the two spirals together if you wanted to make an over the head necklace as well. So you could go down that route as well. So I'm finishing with my core. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my shell pearls. And I'm going to decide on the combination I want for the back of the neck. So I'm going to start with a shell pearl. So that's going to go right onto the end. I can place that, move that out of the way. And again, just make sure that little 15 just needs a little nudge. There we go. Popping around the back. And then that, that, can you see that pearl is a really nice finish. And then I'm gonna come up with a combination. Now, because I had the arc going through the center of my beading, I want to continue with that in my necklace. So I'm going to use an eight, an 11, a 15, an 11. So I'm still keeping with the graduation in size, but I'm using the darker bead rather than the light. Okay, so we're going to go that combination. Then I'm going to pick up the next pearl, I'm going to slide that down, repeat that combination. So a darker 8 0, then two 11s, 
sorry, 111, 115, 111, 18. Slide those down and then pick up my next pearl. And can you see that it just gives it a seamless pattern all the way through. And then we'll, do, we'll, we'll so once we've done, we decide on the, on the length that you want, we're now going to finish th this little bead section and then I'll show you how we add our clasp. So I never end in a shell pull, I always end with the bead section and I never end with the whole bead section. So can you see it gets, it's large, medium, small, that's where I would stop, okay? Because that and then your, your clasp, I think it would just knock it out of kilter a bit. So I like to end with half a section. So I've got my shell pearl that I'm going to pick up an eight, an 11 and a 15. And then I'm going to slide that down. Okay, so that's how I will finish my piece. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut my thread a bit shorter. So for putting on your clasp, you'll only need about six inches of your thread. And I will need my needle again, so I'll keep that to one side. So I'm going to go with a lobster claw clasp at the end, as I mentioned at the beginning in the introduction, because we're using conch shell from the sea, it'd be nice to use the lobster theme. Okay, so I've got a jump ring. Now the jump ring will be at one end, and the lobster claw clasp, because it's got the, the, uh, the intact loop at the end, that will, will um, pop on perfectly on this end. So I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to pop on the lobster claw, like so. And then I'm going to tie a single knot, which will attach it nice and neatly. And then I'm gonna slide it down so it meets my beading. Now at this point, you'll pull really, really tight. So I've now got my lobster claw attached, now I need to secure it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my thread and I'm going to go round the, round the other side of the necklace. You can see I'm using the, the, the thread as a needle. So I'm gonna go round the back, I'm going to come up through the loop of the clasp. I'm gonna pull until you're left with a loop about the size of a grape. Now you're going to take your thread, you can either go down through the loop or up. I always come up through so I'm going to come up through the loop once, pull slightly tight so you're still left with the loop and then back up a second time. Pull that nice and tight. And then what I do is I take my lobster and I just flip it over 180 degrees and I repeat. So what this does is that thread is now crossing over the knot you've already made, locking it into place. So again, I'm going to repeat the same. So I'm going to come up through and then I've got my little loop. I'm going to take my thread up through once, up through twice, it's gonna come up through, and again I'm gonna pull that nice and tight. So that's a single knot followed by a double knot either side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thread because when I'm putting in a clasp, I don't like to cut the thread near the knot I've made because that's a weak point. So I've got my knot, I've got my thread. I'm going to pop on my needle. That's if it's third time lucky. There we go, so straight again, first time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, it's called sewing away. So I've got my needle, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the 15 and the 11 and the eight. So let's just wiggle that through. So I'm just going to go through, and I'm going through the pearl, so I'm exiting the pearl, and I'm just going to sew away until it's just away from the knot. So I've probably gone through, there we go. So you can see I've got about a centimetre of the needle going in and a centimetre of the needle going out. So the rest of the needle is enclosed within the beading. And I'm going to pull nice and tight. So I can be rest assured now, because I've got that inch of thread, inside the tube, inside the, uh, the necklace section here, that now when I go in and cut my thread, it's perfectly safe. It's nice and secure. I've got my thread running through with the knot. I've now cut it off nice and secure. So we'll quickly do the other side. So you're gonna slide off your stopper bead. Okay, you would then do your little B 
speed section that we've got here. Now with a, with a jump ring, ideally you would, have, you would have a closed jump ring. I've got an open jump ring, so all I'm going to do is using my flat nose pliers, can you see we can open and close it. So I'm going to close it and I'm going to go in and can you see on the top of the flat nose pliers we have this little curve. What I'm going to do is where the cut, the open cut is, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to give it a squidge, nice and tight, okay? So that work hardens the squidge together, okay? And then all we're going to do is repeat what we've just done the other end. So I'm going to thread my, thread through my jump ring, pull that nice and tight, okay? So it reaches your beads at the bottom and then we're going to repeat the same process. So we're going to take our thread round the back of the jump ring, up through, pull to the size of a grape, up once, up twice, pull the thread, and I'm going to flip it over 180 degrees, and then I'm going to repeat. So I'm going to come up from the back, size of a grape, up once, up twice, Pull nice and tight. Now that is, this is the technique I use for all of my attaching class to on my seed bead pieces and I've not had a failure yet. I'm going to take my thread, repeat. Now let's see if I can do four times in a row. Let's have a look. Here we go. There we go. Four times straight away. It's fail safe. It's, fail, it's perfect. And again, I'm going to sew away. So I'm going to go through the 15 down through, and again, you would, you would replicate what you did in this section here by sewing through the beads. Come through, that's now nice and secure. It's away from the knot. We go in and we cut our thread, and there we have a very secure lobster at one end, a very secure jump ring at the other end. So if I just quickly talk to you through the completed necklace. So as you can see, we've done this tiny little section here. And in the introduction, I did mention it, it took me about three hours. It's quite, as I said, it's quite a simple technique, very addictive, and it builds up really quickly. So you can see on the, on the design here, I've gone dark to light to dark to bury into the core. It look, I think it would look completely different if you did it in reverse. So it had a very pale core running through the center, and then you graduated to dark on the outside. So it's all about, it's all about playing with color. So I did that section first. So I went from the shell pearl just there. So I did that length first of all, bearing in mind to keep an eye on those little pesky 15 O's. Then I added the pendant drop, which I showed you how to add and how to actually make the pendant. Then I showed you how to do the first section of the core again, which then gets you started. And then you do your next section. Then we come to do our pearls and attaching our clasp. What you can do, which is great fun, is if you start here, you do a whole spiral, which is between 12 and 15, then pop in a shell pearl. So if I pop in a shell pearl there, then you would do your four beads to start your core. Then you do another corkscrew, add another shell pearl. So you can, in effect, do little sections of your corkscrew in between your shell pearls. You'll still get that spiral, but you just get little mini spirals. So we'd pop one in there. So it's, it's, again, it's a really, really useful little technique. So you can make bracelets, you can make necklaces, you can make over the head necklaces by joining the spiral together. You can make the most amazing earrings as we've pointed out. And your shepherd's hook or your earring findings you would pop on to your spiral exactly the same way as I did with my clasp. So, so look back on YouTube. And I, th I, think, I think the most important, most important is threading your needle, which I've shown you how to do, how to add more thread and how to successfully add your um, clasps to finish off your necklace. So just using a bit of imagination, your gift from the calendar today, your little conch pendant drop here, just what you can achieve just with a few seed beads from your stash and a needle and thread. So I can't wait for you to have a go at this. And as I said, it's very addictive. And if you've never wanted to have a go at seed bead and you thought it was too tricky, have a go at this. It will completely change your outlook on seed beading. And I can't wait, hopefully, to see some of your pieces on the Wall of Fame. So this was day four of our 13-day advent calendar. Make sure you tune in tomorrow and the rest of our celebrations. And I'm back 
on the 9th with another little treat. So thank you so much for joining me and I can't wait to see you on the next show. Bye bye. <laughs>